Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Pi Network node on a Windows 10 PC. The Pi Network is now moving over to mainnet and it is an excellent opportunity to get involved. They are going to need nodes and they're going to need lots of them to support the community. It's going to be a great thing because it hasn't moved over to mainnet completely. It still has zero value right now, but there's over 30 million users. So you can expect this crypto to take off. There's a few things that you get while you have access. When you become a node, you're able to submit transactions to the blockchain, verify the validity of the blockchain, enable mode app users to submit transactions, and later down the road when super nodes are available, you'll also be able to participate in the consensus and help other nodes or super nodes get the latest state of the blockchain. To get this installed correctly, you are going to need an account with the Pi Network. Now, if you don't already have one registered, you can click on the link below. I have an invitation link in there. And you're also going to need to install Docker and also download the Pi Network software. Now, all the links that I'm going to be using will be in the description below, and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So let's get started. So we're gonna begin at our Windows 10 desktop and I'm gonna open up my browser here. And as you can see, and I'm already at the Pi Network homepage and mindpi.com is the official website. And to download the Pi node, you can see the link up here at the top. We're gonna to click on that and we'll be able to download the application right off the site. So we'll click on download and I'm gonna be doing the Windows version. So let's click on download. And it's about 118 megs in size. That download's complete. So I'll start the setup right now. So the setup's complete and it just created a shortcut on the desktop over here and now it's launching the app. So it's asking me to log in and I'll click and sign in. And what it's gonna ask me to do is sign into my mobile app. Now I have my Android emulator installed on this computer. So I can load it up right now and it looks exactly the way it would if it's running on your phone. I'm doing this so I can have it side by side. Okay, I'm gonna open up my Pi app. Since I'm already logged in, it should go in right away and then we can do this side by side. So I have the no desktop app on the left and I have the mobile app on the right. And it's gonna ask me for, to enter this code. So I'm just going to the menu here and I'm gonna select node and it's gonna to wanna to use a sign in code. So that's the sign in code over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. The code has been submitted and it's now logged in on the node app. I no longer need the mobile app, so I'm gonna close that and get that out of the way. And now we're here at the desktop node app and we're ready to install the software. And we'll begin by clicking on the node icon. And it's gonna let us know that we need to install the Docker and we're also gonna to have to open up some ports on our router. So let's go ahead and first do the first step and that is to install the Docker. So I'm gonna click on this link over here to download the Docker and I'll be using Chrome, there we go. And I'll download it. So the Docker is 520 megs in size, just to keep that in mind uh, if you have a disk space issue or if you're using an SSD, which is sometimes limited for some users. Okay, I'm gonna say yes. And we have the components installed and shortcuts created. So I'll click on OK. OK, so it looks like Docker has now completely installed. I can close and restart it. And it's going to restart and I'll be back in just a minute. OK, so we have it rebooted. I'm just loading up the node again. Might take a second here. OK, so here we are at the main screen. We can click on Continue. And let's just scroll down here. So it looks like the Docker is installed. Or it looks like we're going to have to update some software components. So let me just open it up right now. And uh, so here's the user agreement. So I'm just gonna quickly go through this and accept the terms and then click on accept. And here's the update that we're gonna have to install right now. So I'm gonna click on the link. It's opening up my browser here. Let's see if it automatically downloads. It doesn't look like it's downloading right away. So there's a package. So there is the link to download the package and it's gonna download it and now I can run it. So we'll click on open file and just click on next say yes to the prompt and let it complete here. We'll click on finish. And if I scroll down a bit here, I have to set my default version. So I need to run PowerShell. So I'm just gonna go into my start menu, look for PowerShell. I'm gonna run this as administrator. I'll say yes to the prompt. And then I can just uh, move this over and copy the line and then I can paste it inside PowerShell, hit enter, and there we go. So you can see that operation has been completed successfully. Uh, so what I can do is I can just close out of this browser and close PowerShell. And I'm going to quickly shut everything down and just reload it and see if we can get a nice fresh start. Okay, it's just loading up right now and I think we're done. No, we're not. Okay, so we just got to run this in command prompt or terminal. So I'm going to copy this. And I'll go to my start menu and I'm going to open up my command prompt and I'll paste in the line, hit enter. Looks like it's going to download some components here. 
Okay, it needs access for my through my firewall, so I'll allow access. And it looks like it's good. So let's go back now. See if it wants to complain about anything else. Okay, looks like it's running right now. Priceless Vaughn. And let's go over here. So it looks like we have that done. We have the daemon running. And now we have to open up some ports. And I'm going to do that next. Okay, so the port is not open. And I feel that I knew that was going to happen because I'd have zero of these ports open up on my router. So I'm going to log into my router right now. I'm using a Ubiquiti gateway as my edge router. So I'm going to be going into that right now. And I'm going to open up the ports. So that took a lot longer than I expected. Um, I had a few complications on my side, but I have everything going through my Ubiquiti Edge device and through my modem, and it's passing traffic back and forth. So we're up and running, everything successfully passed now. And what we can do is just click on continue. Port forwarding is gonna vary depending on the modem or router that you're using. I recommend going to a site like this, portforward.com, and look for the instructions for your specific router to go through the steps to open up the ports that are required for this job. Okay, so it's now turned on. The node is ready to test. You just have to hit the switch to turn it on and off. And basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is have it on whenever you're using your system or when you wanna leave it available and turn it off when you're not gonna have it available. It's gonna keep track of your availability and try to keep a record of that. So if you wanna to apply to be a super node later on, there's a little bit of a track record for that to go through. Uh, there's a lot more information about how this works on the website and it goes into a lot of detail. And what I'll do is I'll link that in the description below so you can read that further if you're interested in running a node for the Pi Network. But here we are, we're up and running. We're running a Pi Network node on a Windows 10 PC. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. It does get a little bit complicated because there are quite a few little components that need to be activated for it to be running properly. I'll leave a link to my blog that outlines all the steps in a little bit more detail in case this video wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a like. I really appreciate it. If you want to know how this is progressing over time, subscribe to the channel and I'll be giving updates about my journey with this Pi Network note. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.